Well, I'm back again. Welcome back, or welcome for the first time, to the Don't Stifle Me podcast. My name is Jacob Stiefel, and it is a pleasure to be here talking to you right now. (laughs) This is where I get to sit and talk with folks, mostly in the music and entertainment worlds, but we have interesting conversations, swap some old war stories, and whatever else comes up. Uh, For now, this podcast is sponsored by me. Uh, Like I said, uh, my name is Jacob Stiefel. I have music on iTunes and... There's merchandise and tour dates of mine at my website, which is jacobstiefel.com. And coming up, I do have some shows. I will be in the great state of Texas for a few weeks, actually, from uh, June 30th through around July 17th. Texas folks, friends, family, loved ones, I'll be coming back to you. I'll be in Galveston, Austin, New Braunfels, Dallas, and who knows where else. Uh, so, So keep in touch and come back to a show if you can. In the meantime, here is today's podcast episode. Today's guest, guests, yes, plural, plural guests today. (laughs) I've got two fantastic people for you to hear from at the same time because the duo Town, with an E, stopped by and chatted with me here at the office yesterday morning for a while. And uh, they're based here in Nashville. They got harmonies like a couple of birds and stories for days. So I'm not even going to waste any more of your time. John and Stevie from the duo Town are awesome, talented, good, fun people, and here is our conversation that we had. What's up, guys? Oh, man, it's a... It's a great day to do a podcast. <laughs> yeah, it is a, it is a beautiful day in Nashville, Tennessee. It is. I haven't been outside yet, but I, but I feel good you, about myself. You hear inside. that it's nice. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I hear that outside things nice. It's yeah. been a yeah. So what's uh what what's, what is it today? Today's Monday, right? Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Yes, it is. What y'all do this weekend? Man, I literally I have it has been the past couple weeks for me have been absolutely insane in the best ways possible, but. uh like kicking off, we were doing CMA Fest, and during CMA Fest, John and I we stayed very busy, which is a, is a good thing. Our publicist uh, really was like, "I'm not gonna let you guys sleep," <laughs> which yeah. is a good thing. So, but in the midst of all that, um, my best friend, literally, she's like my only girl in the world that. Um, I've become super close with. I haven't seen her in like what five years or something like that. Like she had, she'd got married. She had a kid. I had never met her husband. Obviously, never had met her child. Um, and she was like, "I'm gonna come visit you. When are you gonna be home for sure? Because we're on the road quite a bit." So I was like, "Well, I'll be, I'll be home during CMA." Yeah. Uh, week. It'll be an and, exciting uh, time to come. And so she's like, all right, it's a, I'm putting it on the calendar. I'm coming down. And I was like, that's awesome. Ne- I never really thought about the fact that I was going to have a hard time like yeah, actually seeing any- her. Or sleeping. Um, or doing or right sleeping. Yeah. yeah. And, and it's so true, too, because like, I mean, we I, it actually it turned out to be like the most awesome visit in the yeah, world. Um good. So, but yeah, she was staying with me and I was hosting her beautiful family and we had a wonderful time. And throughout all that, we got all of our, we had a great show during CMA Fest at the Hard Rock and um, lots of great interviews and fan interaction. So it was a, that was a intense weekend. And then literally the morning (laughs) that she and her family left, my parents came in to visit. Like <laughs> it's been an exciting time. It has been like crazy. Um, but I was on the way over here. I told John, I was like, it is, it's really been fulfilling. And I'm really happy that we were granted the, the little time that we had with the family yeah, and friends sure. and stuff like that. So we made it work. We can do it. <laughs> yeah. I uh, happened to book um, that we, the week of CMA fest week here in, in Asheville, I happened to book, 
road shows like oh, like Wednesday through Saturday, and I was Smart very man. okay with that. Smart man. <laughs> it got like I, I, I booked them months ago, yeah. and I wasn't really thinking about it being that week. And then at some point between then and now, I got to looking ahead, and I was like, oh, that's the week of CMA Festival. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes, I'm not going to be in Nashville. It uh, was insane. Like the Predators, you know, they had that whole Stanley Cup thing going oh, on. Yeah. So there was just like twice as many people downtown. Um, and I'm just, I mean, like I, I, looking back, I'm amazed that, you know, everything went so smoothly. Uh, For those of you who can't uh, tell the difference in their voices. Um, this is, Stevie is the one that's been talking, and John is sitting over here quietly. Waiting. I just listen. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm, he waits I, for his moment. I'm just the I, I'm I'm the pretty one, okay? <laughs> the eye candy, eye candy, John. I'm gonna just call you that the rest of the day. Wear low cut shirts. <laughs> you do. I'm wearing one right now. Yeah, I got that that chest hair. Just, that's right. Just all of, I've got eight <laughs> chest hairs, so everyone is on display. Oh man, sitting here with town. Um. Where, let's see, who should we start? I'm going to go with Eye Candy John over here. Where are you from, John? I'm from Monticello, Kentucky, originally, uh, which is in the foothills of the Appalachian Mountains, right uh, dead in the heart of the middle of nowhere. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and so lived there for most of my childhood and moved to uh, another middle of nowhere town right outside of Nashville called Pleasant View when I was a kid. So kind of have dual citizenship. Kentucky nice. Now is uh, Monticello, is that how you say it? Uh-huh. Is that like uh, um, in some places there are, let's see, like like here in Nashville, we have Lebanon, Lebanon right. Pike. Anywhere else in the world you go, and that's said Lebanon. Right. Except yeah. for in Tennessee, we, we say Lebanon. Very is that kind of like that Monticello? Anywhere else you go, it would be Monticello. Monticello. Yeah, yeah, I mean, Kentucky's yeah. got a lot of those. There's also Versailles in Kentucky. Do they really say Versailles? Oh, I swear. Yeah, it's right outside of Lexington. <laughs> it's Versailles, obviously Versailles, anywhere yeah. else. And I can't, there's a, there are several other ones in Kentucky uh, that have that same, uh, same thing going on. We also have a, a place there that nobody can agree on. There's Louisville or Louisville, like, <laughs> one town that nobody in the state can agree on how to say it. So I had a, I'm a, <clears throat> it's a confused place. I enjoy telling really bad jokes. Okay, so I, I do. <laughs> Me it, too. Uh, yeah. at, I like listening my, to really bad jokes. In my shows, <laughs> I like to you know, especially in between two like really serious songs, just tell a really like, corny dad like just terrible joke. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, I had a guitar player one time that told me this one so i'm gonna i'm gonna share this one with you you can you can take it on to your people um so these two guys were sitting in a restaurant eating some cheeseburgers and they were talking about where they were and one guy was saying i'm telling you it's, i've been here all my life it's louisville uh-huh and the other guy was like no there's an s in it it's it's clearly Louisville. clearly <laughs> right They're back and forth back and forth <clears throat> finally Lady that works at the at the place walked over and walked by or something, and one of the guys said, "Ma'am, can you please tell my friend here slowly, say it slowly, the name of the place where we are right now?" She said, "Burger King." <laughs> <laughs> it's terrible, isn't it? It's one of the yeah, worst jokes yeah, I know. It's, bad. Yeah. it's not like I have yeah. on a scale of like Burger zero to ten King. of funny of my jokes. That's like a one. <laughs> I'm not, I laugh. That's a good one. I also one. have pretty low standards. You're, so I've got you're in my house. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Trying, trying to, to be me, polite. Yeah, trying to make me feel good. It's okay. Yeah. <laughs> so I think it's hilarious. <laughs> I'm using that oh, one. I'm man. telling that one forever now. Do it. Do it. Do it. <clears throat> um, so you. So okay. So you grew up in old Monticello. I sure did. And then moved to Pleasant Pleasant View. Is that what yep, talking? Pleasant okay. View. When I was in middle school, and uh, yeah, graduated high school, and. Uh, that's yeah. a good thing to do. That's a good thing. I'm glad. Yeah, you- <laughs> yeah, I did that. I didn't get. I, mean, I know so people l- who didn't, but it's okay. Yeah, I, no, I, did, I uh, didn't get so lucky with college, but but I had the high school thing down. So I would say if you, well, I was going to say if you had to choose between the two, but I don't guess you can choose between the no, two. No, I, I, I think <laughs> have to have one, one have the other. Yeah. But uh, yeah, the, the graduating high school is a good thing. So yeah. uh, did you give the college thing a shot? You know, I did. Uh, I wound up dropping out. I was, uh, I guess, a sophomore, and I had joined a band. Uh, and just said, I'm just going to hit the road. So um, I went and lived in a van. And uh, unfortunately, I was actually really good at school. 
I, I think I still have a 3.8 GPA. Somewhere. And show off. I, I know, I know. I'm just <laughs> just flaunting it. Uh, and I really like school, but uh, just to do what I wanted to do with my life, uh, I knew that you couldn't go to school to do that. Yeah, so. at, yeah at that, and do it at the same time. E- e- exactly. Yeah, 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 for sure. So. Um, so when did you start? When did you start on music? When did you start playing? Uh, when I was a kid, I, I had realized that it was <clears throat> one thing that I was uh, consistently uh, pretty good at, and it came pretty easy to me. Um, what was your first instrument? Uh, first, <laughs> the recorder. Uh, oh, yeah. You know, uh-huh. Like everybody's in third grade. Yeah. No, I wound up playing cello when I was in fourth grade. Don't you mean cello? The cello uh, <laughs> in uh, the four-string cello. Uh, if you're in Kentucky, that's what it's called. That's true. That's cello. true. That's mm-hmm. true. No culture. Mm-hmm. And uh, oh, so uh, so yes. the cello, and then I played trumpet, and uh, yeah, eventually wound up playing guitar. And uh, started a band when I was in, I guess, eighth grade. Uh, nice. Yeah, it's, uh, we got to play in the in the uh, eighth grade talent show. What was your band name called? Uh, I, I can't remember. Uh, one was called Bottom Doubt. That's so <laughs> much cooler. I'm going to tell you mine in a second. And then, <laughs> and, uh, and then I was in a band, in a band called Cutter. Oh uh, man! And uh, yeah, did you have a mullet? No, no, no. I it just it, sounded like mullet. It, well, you know. And we just, I think we all dated cutters at one point in high school. Oh, so, uh, Ooh, yikes. That's, that was, that's the kind of girls we were into. And, uh, Ooh. so anyways, yeah, just. The daddy issue girls or something? Going. Like, I don't know. Whichever <laughs> ones would talk to us, I think. Your was, fan base was <laughs> yeah, really, yeah. really depressing. I had a, uh, in junior high. They were hot. <laughs> oh, I don't remember what, what grade it was. Junior high sometime. Uh, my quote, technically the first band I had, we, we didn't ever play and three of the four guys didn't play a musical instrument, <laughs> Nice, <laughs> but we had plans. Yeah. Uh, we're going to be called the white wings and that in no way was racist. <laughs> in no way. We were all white, but that's, that has, right. no, that has nothing to do with one, co- had nothing to do with the totally other. Totally coincidental. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, I think we were going to be like a Christian rock band or something. I don't know. Okay. But yeah, had, that I, I was, can see that. That was as far as it went right there. Yeah, Golden Wings also. <laughs> if, if it came down to a weird thing, you could have changed it to that. <laughs> <laughs> it would have been good. Uh, <laughs> rock and roll. Um, so what was <laughs> in, in college when you were living in your van? Right, and right. And you were so, uh, um, contemplating life. Yeah, so I was always the guy. I mean, speaking of all those high school bands, uh, I was the, the only guy I've ever met that uh, consistently got kicked out of high school bands, and uh, because I was real serious, uh, you know, I was always wanting to book shows. I was always wanting to practice um, all that, and I would be sitting in practice with my bass or guitar or whatever I was doing at the time. Yeah, in whatever particular band, and once. Uh, they all started jamming, you know, because that's what you do in high school, right? I would, this is no shit, I would put down my instrument, I would walk out. i say, when y'all motherfuckers want to play a song, you let me know. Yeah. And that, and I was, and so I, what an asshole, right? Business John, and yeah. So I, I mean, it, it was just, I never, I don't know, that's just how I was. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. But well, yeah. me and I, you, could, I could see. Maybe I could have been in the White Wings. <laughs> And he's so definitely a buzz We would, have, we would have had everything killer. planned out perfectly. Now, I don't know <laughs> right. if we would have been able to jam on anything, but right. <laughs> like whistle, have, maybe. Yeah. yeah, we would have had the schedule down pat. Right. Hand claps. <laughs> so, uh, when I was, I guess, uh, maybe a freshman in college or something, I was probably 18 years old. Uh, these other guys who were also in touring bands, kind of doing what I wanted to be doing in Nashville, uh, they had uh, seen me at. The club, the only all ages club back then, was called the Muse down on Fourth uh, Avenue, and uh, they're like, "Hey, we're quitting our bands to start another band to hit the road. Do you want to be in it?" And I said, "Fuck it, yeah." And I'd never heard the music. I didn't care what it was. Yeah. Uh, I just said, "I'm in," because that's what I want to do. And so, uh, yeah, uh, we started a band called the Pink Spiders, and. Um, just pretty much hit the road as soon as we started. Actually, we had it. We went down to somewhere BFE Georgia and recorded an EP. And before our first show, our first show was our release party, I think. Yeah. 
And so, and then we just hit the road, man. And uh, I just, I lived in a how van. Old, how old were you at that point? Maybe, uh, 18 or 19. <clears throat> wow. So then, uh, kudos to you. Uh, well, <laughs> I could barely pick out shoes at eighteen. I'm like, <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't. We didn't pick out shoes yeah. either. So, uh, <laughs> but uh, so did that and uh, played in that band for a couple of years and just did it, man. Slept on floors, uh, did whatever we had to do. Yeah, wound up with a, you know, a big major label record deal, uh, eventually, and. Uh, uh, Signed to Geffen Records, which was my dream. Nice, Talk, yeah. going, speaking of, going back, uh, I had a whole point in my life where all these childhood dreams wound up coming true. Uh, I was maybe seven or eight years old, and I first saw Guns N' Roses, <laughs> and I said, that's what I want to do. Yeah. And so I remember me and my mom were living in the basement of my grandparents' house in uh, Monticello, and... Uh, and I was drawing out, I would always like draw pictures and logos for bands that I wasn't, you know, I was eight. Yeah. <laughs> and the first one was called Tarantula that I ever drew. I'll never forget drawing it and coming up with song titles. And we were, you we were spelled s- Tarantula at eight years old. Yeah. I was, wow. I, that's what, <laughs> that's why you're, yeah, you are good at school. I was, yeah, I was really good at spelling. I was, I was sitting here. I'm not going to lie. I was sitting here trying to think of how to spell it myself. T-R-A. <laughs> at 29 T-R-A-R-A-N-T-U-L-A. years old. T-R-A-R-A-N-T-U-L-A. Oh, there you go. See, I didn't know if there was two R's or not. So, <laughs> no, just one. It's a single R. And so, uh, that, and yeah, in my head, we were signed to Geffen Records and I was the bass player because Duff McKagan was <laughs> my hero. Yeah. And uh, I'll be damned, uh, you know, about 12 years later, I was in playing bass in a rock band called the Pink Spiders on Geffen Records. So that's freaky. That's, was, that's actually really cool. Pretty yeah. wild. Yeah. And uh, they say like to write down your like if you to can write down see your it, goals. Yeah. If you can write down your goals and, and see it, it, they come true. Yeah. So you got a um, head start on everybody. I believe, I, think. I believe that to a certain to a certain point. Mm-hmm. I, I think I was just lucky. Yeah, <laughs> I think it was all just total bullshit luck. And uh, <laughs> I also believe we just rot in the ground when we die. Will so. you stop? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but anyhow, uh, actually now <laughs> nowadays we rot inside of a, a box. weatherproof box. That's true. That never that like, probably takes a little bit longer. I, I, I wish I could just like just put me in a hole. Right. Yeah. And right. Let, let the bugs and snakes and stuff eat me. Yeah. Is that weird? Just let the inevitable happen. I want right? I want to be anyway. You want to mm. be part of it. <laughs> this is a whole that's a whole other podcast. It's a whole whole other podcast. <laughs> a, we just veered down a dark hole there. Um, so uh blah, blah, blah. So yeah, man, I, I did that for a while and it was it was really great. And um eventually I was kind of uh in a place where I was like, Well, what else do I want to do? I mean and I just so started still living around where like in, Pleasant View or whatever. Oh, uh, no. I mean, I at that point, I had lived in L.A. for a while, lived in New York and kind of didn't care for either place. So yeah. uh, I was living back in Nashville and there's commuting uh, everywhere. But anyways, so I was thinking, well, what else can I do? Um, and me and my drummer, Bob, we were huge country music fans. So I would always be like on the late shift, whether it was driving or just I'd be up late. And we had this playlist and always had just classic country on it. And he was the only person that would listen to it with me. We really enjoyed it. And uh, so we were like, oh, let's start a a country band on the side. Because in in rock and roll, you tour for like nine months in, in a row. Well, you know, you don't really come home a lot. Yeah, and, Dad. Uh, I was on the phone with my dad yesterday, and he was. I was telling him uh, my roommate cousin Chance, yeah, that, um, working with Jason Isbell right yeah. now. They just left to go on the road a few days ago, and going to be gone for like six weeks. Yeah. Exactly. <clears throat> that Dad was. Dad was saying, "Is that common? Because all he's really heard is me talk about. You know, we'll go out for like four or five days, or right? Two or three days, maybe a week and a half or whatever yeah. in the country, whatever small level that I'm at." Uh, whatever genre I'm in. Anyway, um, but I was telling him that, yeah, in the country, country or world, more people do the small runs. Right, it's like, it's in, like four or five days. Yeah. I was telling him, but like country, or like rock and roll and pop, they'll go off for months and yeah. months at a time. Right, so the deal is, you know, when you're out for, you know, however many months in a row, 
uh, when, you know, like say we'd be out for nine and we'd be home for three. Well, those three months feel like an eternity. And uh, just because you're bored, you just don't have anything to do. So we were like, all right, well, let's start a, a country band. We're like, okay. And he's like, well, you know, you're going to have to write songs for this. And I was like, oh, I never thought of it. I'd never really thought about writing songs, but okay, I'll give it a try. And we had released that EP. Uh, it was a band called Dixie Whiskey. And uh, had all kinds of critical acclaim. And I was like, well, shit, that was easy. Maybe I can just like write songs. I never, you know... The country, so the, yeah. the country one, yeah, I wound up getting all kinds of uh, great. It was like on the top ten releases in Nashville. It was us and Kings of Leon, Paramore, <laughs> Beer on Pet, and Dixie Whiskey. And I was like, well, that was easy. <laughs> Shit, this ain't hard. And so, uh, so anyway, That's I mean, awesome. obviously, it wound up being a lot harder than I thought. <laughs> but uh, so I kind of veered down that path and uh, wound up. Just with several lucky breaks, I wound up uh, being in real tight with uh, this guy Dean Dillon, who's a big, uh, you know, song big in the songwriter world. Yeah, if you know anything about songwriting, yeah, that's a pretty good guy to be in tight with. It was totally <laughs> bizarre, right? So I had no idea really who he was, and we he wound up kind of taking me under his wing for a while, and I was like, oh, that's cool, and. Uh, so yeah, I mean, again, just kind of like this is ridiculous. I'm I didn't know any of this stuff. Asshole, I'm just sitting. Right? I'm just like, sitting I'm back just, here <laughs> taking it in. I'm just force gumping my way through life, right? That's Which exactly I, what I, mean, I tell them all the time. That's what yeah. I do. And so I wound up, you know, doing that, and he kind of can, you know, helps me put some dots together, and I'm like, oh, okay, well that's cool. And then I wind up at uh, this songwriting thing out in Wyoming. And uh, this is all long story short because I could I could take up several hours of your time and I and, bore, to go. and bore you to tears. But uh, <laughs> wound up at Skip Ewing, who was another kind of giant in the songwriting world, out at his uh, seminar in Wyoming where I meet Stevie because we had gotten scholarships to go to this thing. And uh, funny story, actually, speaking of Dino. Uh, the way I so the way I got to Wyoming to go meet her, well, eventually I wound up meeting her there. Uh, was so I'd I'd work and I was digging these. Uh, I was doing a lot of manual labor to get money to get yeah, there. side jobs. And, yeah, yeah, well, yeah, I mean that's, that's what I did for years was just manual labor. Yeah, and uh, <clears throat> so, so I I worked and I made enough money to drive to. Uh, Wyoming. And I was like, well, shit, I don't know what I'm going to do after I get there. But uh, but Dean had called me. He was like, hey, why don't you swing down to... My... He had just bought his place in uh, Crested Butte, Colorado. Why don't you swing down to Colorado and help me out on the ranch? And uh, I'll pay you and all that. I was like, okay, that's perfect. So I went from <laughs> Dubois, Wyoming to Crested Butte, Colorado and worked for him for like a week and a half and then made my way back home. So I was... Uh, so how did you meet him? How did you meet Dean Dillon? So, uh, so what if he had like a song on every George Strait album or something like that? All like, except for one, yeah. <clears throat> uh, but no, so I was... Uh, I So whenever I'd be home, I used to hang out at the Gold Rush, which was this bar. I guess it's still a bar over on Ellison Place. Yeah. And... Uh, so I wound up uh, meeting his daughter, Jesse. I had no idea who she, either of them were. And uh, wound up uh, meeting this girl, Jesse. Wound up, and we wound up dating eventually. And I, I was still on the road at the time. And she would be like, tell me about her, her day and like what she was doing. Oh, I'm doing this. And I was like, oh, that sounds cool. And you know, she'd be like, oh, I'm going to Kenny Chesney's birthday party. And I'm like, oh, oh okay, uh, that's cool. Like, it's weird because, like, you're not, like, you don't have a lot of success and you're hanging out with Kenny Chesney and all this. <laughs> yeah. And then eventually uh, she was like, well, I think I need to kind of, like, tell you something. She's like, my dad's kind of, like, a really big deal. And Oh, uh, yeah, so you got in that way. Well, sort of, yeah, yeah. And, and, and but the Forrest deal, Gump Forrest over Gump, here. I know. Yeah, the whole, <laughs> but the whole weird thing was, was like, you know, I didn't, I didn't even really, uh, I wasn't that educated on the fact that there were just songwriters, you know, in the rock world. Yeah. You're, it's totally different. You. If you're, you're the really artist, you yeah. write the songs. And I was vaguely familiar 
yeah. with that world, but I had never like seen it up close uh, very much. And so I was like, oh, okay, well, I, I don't, I don't care. Yeah, cool. Your dad writes songs. Yeah. Big deal. Yeah. I mean, exactly. <laughs> and, and the thing about George Strait, it was like, I mean, yeah, I know he's a big deal, but it was, he wasn't Garth. You know what I mean? That there's a, so, yeah, big, there's, well, mate, yeah, he was it, Garth about like 14 years before. Okay. Garth, right. Gotcha. And so yeah. the thing to is someone who wasn't aware of it. Exactly. The so the deal you. is, it was almost like George Strait was, was kind of like, he came stock with every car radio when I was a kid, you know, like mm-hmm. it wasn't like, you know, you talk to people, you know, maybe 10 years older than me, they're like, dude, George Strait, when he came out, it was like, you know, he came out with Unwound yeah. and it was like this rock. He was like, he was the real deal crazy in it. And I, I see that looking back, but to me it wasn't. Well, like yeah. When that. you're, what were you like around 20 or early, yeah. early 20s, yeah. something like that. Yeah. Like that. So yeah, the so thing you, is, yeah, I, I didn't really have any kind of, you know, what's in it. your, your it, exactly your circle of stuff. Yeah. Through my <laughs> life. So, an, so, so anyhow, it was like, okay, whatever. And, we didn't even really talk much about, you know, writing or anything. We he just uh, he would have me come out and work on his ranch uh, in Springfield, and uh, we did that a lot. We uh, Dean watched. Dylan wrote Unwound, by the way. Yeah, you know, I, 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 <laughs> I'm sitting here. I'm sitting here looking. I'm I'm listening yeah, to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. People are listening. I just wanted to get you. A no, he wrote there. them all pretty yeah, much. Dean Dean uh, Dylan, this guy we're talking about. He wrote. Let's just go through here and just read some of these. Uh, Tennessee whiskey. Uh, whichever version you've heard, George Jones, David Allen Coe, or Chris Stapleton's newest, he wrote all those words. The Chair, yeah. Oceanfront Property. I mean, yeah. yeah I mean, it's, so many. It's yeah. pretty unbelievable. Nobody's this guy's. Right Mind, Marina Del Rey. Yeah. Uh, she Let Herself Go. I'm just doing the ones that I recognize. Right, <laughs> right. There's there's a list here. Just go to Wikipedia and search Dean Dillon's So It's quite yeah. a list. <laughs> yeah, he so and, and an amazing uh, body of work for sure. But I mean, but but not only did I not know, but I just I did not give a shit. Like yeah. that was the furthest thing from what I really. I mean, the the biggest thing I was impressed with after I learned was Tennessee whiskey because it's yeah. it's still one of my favorite George Jones songs I yeah. ever heard. And actually, on that playlist I was telling you about that me and my drummer had, mm-hmm. Tennessee whiskey was the second <clears throat> song on it. Oh, Every nice. single night, I remember it was. It, it'd be like, I used to sprint, you know. Yeah. That was. <laughs> I mean, that was our thing. And so I was like, oh, that's cool. But but I mean, tr- the truth is, I did not give a shit and couldn't. Uh, I it wasn't my world it yeah. is why it's not that. Uh, That's probably why you got so why you got to be close with him because yeah, yeah, people people yeah. like that somebody's always wanting something from him. Yeah. So if somebody comes along that doesn't really give a shit, they probably enjoy that. I, yeah, and, and we just got along. We were, you know the thing is he was from pretty much the same part of the country. He um as the crow flies, he was from about an hour south of Monticello. Yeah. He's from a place called Lake City, Tennessee. And uh, so very similar people. Very, uh, mm-hmm. uh, you know, there's not a nice way. You know, very hillbilly, very backwood. But, I mean, yeah, I, I mean, say that with all the, the love in my heart because right. I'm one of those people. Yeah, for sure. Um, but that's j- just really the best way to describe it. And uh, so... Anyways, we just wound up getting along like, you know, old kin. Yeah. Uh, before long, and um, so yeah, I didn't want nothing from him, you, you know, whatever. And he yeah. just wanted some work out of me, so I was like, fine. And you know, we wound up writing some songs together, and he wound up really loving what I do. So very cool. It just kind of worked out. Forrest Gump over here. I'm telling you, it's okay. So Stevie, how about you? Yeah. So that gets, that you, gets you, you know how unfair this is. So like, <laughs> it's you know how like you like you're you're about to play a show and like there's this band that comes on before you and they kick ass yeah. and you're like shit, <clears throat> I have to go after that. Mm-hmm. It's pretty much how I feel every time John like just starts vomiting his life story and I'm like I'm definitely the Jenny. That, like, is just a part of this life somewhere, you know? Like, I am so Jenny from Forrest Gump. But he is, uh, I pale in comparison. Uh, no. To, to See, but but the truth is, if you ask Forrest, <laughs> he would he would beg to differ. Yeah. All of the cool things. I mean, the uh, everything that she has done uh, is, uh, to me, is uh, much more in- impressive. 
Yeah. Uh, in every respect. Such so. a forest answer too. Yeah. I tell you, this. This I'm is... lucky. I'm a lucky girl. I am. I am. I, uh, you know, I, I'm from a very small town called Blairsville, Pennsylvania. Um, hey. yeah, which is close to, uh, Pittsburgh. We're like 45 miles east of Pittsburgh. Um, but I grew up in, uh, and I have one sister, but I grew up in a big, like Italian family kind of from both sides. So I grew up with, <laughs> My family were my best friends. Um, but yeah, small town. And speaking like when I met John, I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm from a small town, too. And he was like, yeah, right. You know, like you're definitely people are always say that, but they're yeah. usually like, oh, well, I graduated. There's only like, like 50,000 people in my home. Yeah. 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 Well, yeah. like <laughs> my graduating high school class had like 70 people in it. So okay. like we just knew everybody. But I grew up. Yeah, uh, and that beautiful. Actually, my my childhood was really awesome. Uh, I stood out like a sore thumb for sure because like music was not uh, a thing. Yeah, I didn't grow up with musical parents or really anything. I mean, my grandfather played the organ a little bit, and um, he played a little bit of harmonica, and I always thought that was really cool because he would like get it out during like these big Italian family. Oh yeah you know, get togethers. And I thought it was really neat. But, um, other than that, I was like in my own little black sheep musical world. <laughs> yeah. When did, when did you start with me? When did you, when Honestly, did the music bug bite? The music bug. So like, you know, when you're, when you're a little girl who like clings to who with a, I had a very big imagination. So like the Disney world. And I, I know it's kind of cliche cause the more girls I meet that are in the business, they, they always say like, oh, it's the Disney, Disney really, you know, that was like my life. And I learned all those songs, right. but I kind of just at a young age, I can still remember being in kindergarten um, and I already had been introduced to every classic uh, Disney movie ever because my grandpa Fisher was like really into Disney. And so he had all these record or, you know, copies. What was your, what was your favorite Disney movie? Well, The Little Mermaid for sure, you yeah. know, because like, <laughs> yeah. My sister watched that, but I don't, I don't, I never, I guess that was the the girl, the girlier one or whatever. That was the one. most, that was the one that came out like, I mean, I think it came out in 89, 90, but it definitely like resurfaced and like went back into the movie theaters and I saw it for the first time, I think with my grandmother. Anyway, I was just like, oh my God, this is like this is awesome, yeah. you know, and just imitating everything from that movie and every other movie, like, you know, Sleeping Beauty and Snow White and all those, like I could imitate it even at a young age. Um, it wasn't like, like I truly, it wasn't just this little girl going, look at this stuff. Isn't it neat? Like I literally <laughs> like tried to just mimic everything and just yeah. that whole I don't know, a scenario of her like being the best singer out of, but never really cared or never really, she didn't care about that. She just wanted to like get out of her, uh, she wanted to see more of the, of the world, you know? And I was like, oh yeah, you know, being from a small town, you literally like just connect For automatically. Sure. Oh, I yeah. think that's why those movies are so popular because they mm -hmm. resonate, you know, on some I mean, level. The stories, I mean, that story in general. But yeah, I, mean, yeah. I used to go to kindergarten, like show and tell for me was like, it's just singing a Disney song. And I know it's like everybody else like brought in their hamster or whatever, yeah. you know, like, <laughs> yeah. and I was like making my kindergarten teacher, Miss Stella, I love her to death. Um, but <laughs> I would make her reel in the, the, you know, like the, the, boom the, box TV, the TV, oh, the TV, oh, yeah, yeah, I would bring in my VHS tapes <laughs> and I would make her put them in and awesome. fast forward to the songs and I would sing along for the class. That you was know? your show and tell. That was my show that's, and tell. That's perfect. That's, that's like, great. I yeah. was obsessed. Um, so mm. yeah, uh, but it wasn't until, you know, I got older, probably like, I think I entered like a. My that first. makes that makes me feel slightly less bad about my infatuation with the Grease movies. Uh, oh uh, man, those are the best. All I did was like I got the leather jacket and slicked my hair back. <laughs> I didn't smoke cigarettes. <laughs> that was later. That was later. Uh, but yeah, I didn't I, I didn't bring it in and sing and sing into the classroom. So that's 
You got, oh, yeah. you got me beat there. Oh, yeah. That was a big, that was like my my favorite moments. Like, that's all I cared about, yeah. really. That's awesome. Um, and then, too, like, I mean, I got to spend time with my parents this past week and kind of just talking to them about, like, if they even realized, like, did I, they just, they just let me do my thing. Like, they were just really into, like, letting me and my sister be creative and be great. kids and you know i didn't have like a what do they call those moms that like stage mom? stage moms or whatever like she just yeah. it wasn't like that so i just thought it was like this normal <clears throat> thing um i wonder how many people would be in the creative world or the arts world or like would do things like yeah. that but got held back because yeah. either a parent or a teacher or a Some coach or some, somebody you know put him in the wrong direction finger pointed it out of him yeah you know, it was like but oh, I, mean, but I do have to tell a good story though. Oh, so uh, because we both kind of had the same story as Forrest Gump's as, coming as, back. As in. that yeah. goes, <laughs> no. It, it, whenever you said that your folks were just in town, so um, they had a pool party one day. So I went over and was chatting with them, and both of our parents or sets of parents had nothing to do with music. But um, like my dad, for instance, had this huge record collection and was like notorious, had been to hundreds of concerts in his life. <laughs> but talking to her mom just the other day, like she is a f- music fanatic. She was talking about her senior thesis paper being on uh, uh, the Eagles uh, Hotel California oh, when wow. it came out. Mm-hmm. So, so you get it from fan? somewhere. Yeah. And oh, yeah. my bet is your mom because she is like, uh, whenever we put on the you know seventies hits, yeah, Spotify station, she knows every song and she can tell you exactly where she was when the song came. That's out. awesome. Oh uh, yeah, that's, like the yeah. older I got, I mean, like she sent me a record collection. Her, she sent me her record collection one year, and actually John was with me when I got it in the mail. Um, but like it meant so much to me, and I didn't know she was going to send it, you yeah. know, because I just was big box and it was so heavy and I opened it up I just automatically started bawling my eyes out like yeah. I cuz it's just that connection that you crave you know with the with your parents mm-hmm. you know cuz there's just sure. we never really I mean I know I made them like super proud and they probably thought it was like really neat <laughs> to like see me on stage and do all that stuff but um you know I just uh it was a connection that just knowing that she listened to all of those records and, you know, her names on all of them. And it was just really cool. I mean, she's definitely um, a huge music fan for sure. I know exactly what you mean. I grew I grew up listening, <clears throat> listening to my dad's records and yeah. still have like the ones I have on the shelf over here, like half his and half mine. But yeah. he's got at their house in Alabama. I mean, I bet over a thousand records just yeah. on the wall and, I know exactly what you mean, though. Like getting down the same record that my dad went out and bought in 1979 or 81 mm-hmm. or whatever. Yeah. And just the process of getting it out, putting mm-hmm. it on, putting the needle on is the same thing that yeah. he did countless times. It's, it's a cool. Yeah. 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 Uh, so that that is a, that was a, that was really important to me. She she definitely had a huge like impact. And I don't think either of us knew it at the time. Um, for sure. Well, because it wasn't forced. It was just... No, uh, no. And it was just was. really weird. Like, we both, like, the the relationship I've always had with music was never like a... I never really thought about it. It just kind of was, you yeah. know? It was like, I never really <laughs> thought I'd ever go for anything else. Um, actually, I remember being really excited to learn at a young age that, like, like I always used to write music uh or write little songs i loved making things rhyme like my mother's speaking of my parents um like anytime it was mother's day or father's day or their birthdays or whatever like their cards like i would spend weeks like writing out the perfect (laughs) poem you know and like i know she still has them somewhere uh because she always talks about them but like um like my my rhymes were like they just had to be really unique and like really funny or you know just something that would just make them laugh you know yeah. so i was doing that forever um and always really happy that i i could offer something <laughs> 
Someone's mowing the grass. Somebody's I can hear. Mowing the grass. <clears throat> Welcome to my neighborhood, people. You can hear the neighbor <laughs> next door mowing grass. Yeah, well, it's the it's real okay. world. Anyway, it's okay. <laughs> yeah, so that's yeah, that's really cool. I, I I've I've done the same thing, like writing poems and mm-hmm. stuff and cards. And I don't know, like if as far as me, I would rather somebody was giving me a gift. I would almost rather it be something something like something that. Like that. Yeah. yeah. Then. Uh, I mean, I would much prefer cash money. <laughs> oh, <my> God. <laughs> Hold on just a second. All right, and we're back. I had to go tell that tell that lawnmower guy to get the hell out of here. No, it's uh, I'm not complaining because my landlord here, they pay to have the yard mode. So oh, yeah. I don't have to do it, so that's fantastic. But <laughs> I thought they usually came on Wednesdays, and he, he's, he's, it's not Wednesday. Surprise. He's here today. Yeah. So, but he was nice about it. And the, oh, the grass isn't too long, so I just said, hey, man, I'm recording. Can you come back? And he was like, yeah. Well, uh, so, yeah, cool. whatever. Okay. Well, and he said, apparently, I have a bad wasp problem out by our shed. But anyway, <clears throat> back to back to our conversation. What were we talking about? I have no idea. Probably birthday cards talking and about poems. The, the, yeah. the, the best kind of gifts. Yeah, yeah. and you said, yeah. John said. I prefer rather, cash. I prefer cash. The, the cash okay. option. Oh, yeah. my gosh. So if you guys are thinking, my birthday just passed. So. Okay. <laughs> I'll save up for next year. <laughs> I got a couple of dollars, I think. Uh, but, yeah, so, I mean, I can't really. I, I was telling John during the break, I was like, I, I really do wish i would have talked first <laughs> no that's good. that's good but it's just that's great. A, you got the like singing little mermaid your well, my little mermaid. Stuff? that really started it all i felt like a i felt like i could do something you know other people i was never good at sports i was the tallest girl always ever in every class and everyone was always like you should play basketball and i was like i freaking hate basketball yeah. like i was not good at that at all like be aggressive like i was not I was very uncoordinated. I was just this tall, lanky, I don't know, like my limbs just, I had no control over any of that. Yeah. Um, but I just loved, and I was very like the class clown because um, I was had really, really big glasses that kind of like took over my whole face. My teeth were all jacked up. I mean, I just, I wasn't the prettiest girl in school, but man, I could make you laugh. Like that was my... Yeah. thing I just like to entertain like put the spotlight on me I, I I guarantee you you know I can entertain in some way That's but great. singing was like I can still remember even my grandfather like uh at one get-together like word got around that you know oh stephanie that's what that's what my given name is stephanie. Ah, you let it slip i didn't know that <clears throat> yeah stephanie <clears throat> you know stephanie can sing you should hear her sing oh my goodness you know and I'd get really shy about it, you know. Yeah. It just wasn't something, I don't know, I knew how to express. I just knew that I liked it. Um, but my grandfather one day, speaking of money, uh, he pulls out, he's like, come over and sit on my lap. I'm like, okay. And he pulls out this big clip of money. He goes, now sing in front of everybody and I'll give this to you. I just literally started crying my eyes out. I was so embarrassed. Like <laughs> every family member and everyone's like, no stuff it's okay like just sing you know so you and were I, so nervous you started I, like, yeah, yeah i started crying i was like oh i'm really letting everybody down but like Aww. that i i still think of that and like even when i i you know signed up to do this talent show and i loved mariah carey i was like i could sing her you know standing on my head i was loved every bit of her records that they were just really good and so one year, you know, I was like, I'm going to sing Always Be My Baby by Mariah Carey. I was in fifth grade, <laughs> One of the best songs 10 years ever. old. And so, like, I didn't have a karaoke track or anything, but I just made the the guy working the, the setup in the auditorium. Yeah. I was like, just play the song and I'll sing along with it, you know. <laughs> and there's video of it out there somewhere. But I, damned, I freaking sang to every bit of that song i can still remember like looking around to see like if people thought it was good you know because i was like is this even like is this a talent like i just didn't know i just i didn't really know and afterwards everybody was like what the fuck like they didn't say what the fuck but they were like wow you know like steph you really like we didn't know you could sing like we know you're goofy as all hell but we didn't know that you could sing and so I was like, this is really cool. So I really made it a point to, you know, just try out for the musicals and 
you know, I never really, I, I didn't want to be like just an extra or towns person. Like I, I wanted to like be a lead role, you know? Yeah. So, and I was every year in, 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 in high school. I mean, it was a small school, but like we had a wonderful music <laughs> program and I'm very, very thankful for that because it's like most schools, I mean, now they just, they're getting all that stuff out of there and, uh, the music is really the reason I got up every day to go. Cause unlike yeah. John, I, I mean, I was good at school, but like the only classes I cared about were art class yeah. and, well, I liked English a little cause you could write, but like, honestly, I, I, I did not like sitting at a desk yeah. ever, ever. I, I never liked it. It's such a weird thing that we, that it's still carried over from like whatever, a hundred years ago or something or more. Yeah. That we, I don't know, and I don't know a better way to do it. Obviously, I'm sitting here, you know, in a house I rent in you know in Nashville. But <laughs> like that, we put all these, put all our kids for like 12 years. Mm-hmm. We stick them in a room yeah. in rows mm-hmm. and make them sit there and memorize things and just kind of recite things and yeah. like, like I said, I don't know a better way to do it. But if you just stop and think, if we were coming up with a new system right now. Mm-hmm. That would that wouldn't be it. Well, like, you think be- about yeah. it and look at the population <laughs> as a whole. What percentage of the population is successful? What about less than what one two percent maybe? Yet yeah, we put a hundred percent of kids into this. Yeah. So, just I don't know. I'm no gynecologist, <laughs> but those numbers don't <laughs> add up to me, right? Yeah. But, <laughs> well. <clears throat> Gynecologist. Oh my gosh. Mathematician. Wait, they, whatever. Okay. See where your head's at, sir. Yeah, I don't know where. <laughs> uh, back to talking about being lanky and, and goofy and stuff. I oh, had a, man, I had a yeah. guy, uh, and one of the the father of a girl that was around my age, and uh, she and my sister played volleyball and softball and stuff together. And but one time we were sitting there at a tournament, and he was telling me uh, about. We got to talking about girls or something. I don't know. He was, and he said, he said, hey, I had great advice that I would like to pass. I didn't listen to it, of course, because that's not what you do. You don't, you don't listen to advice when you're 16, 17 years old. But uh, if anyone is listening to this and decides to use it, uh, he said, you should, you should always keep your eye on that the the lanky, goofy girls <laughs> because those are the ones that. About five or ten years after high school, are smoking hot. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> and Stevie falls into that category. Like she's very oh, attractive, yeah. that's talented, very sweet. And I think, like that's <laughs> on the surface level. But in all like honesty, I think going through life, being different, yeah, and yes. being a little awkward, and mm-hmm. that thing that 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 grows personality. So. That, Makes yeah. you have determination and hard work. It's like going humility, through, yeah. a lot of humility, and, uh, and I think that's what like oh, yeah. so many, so many like popular, or famous, successful actors, musicians, like mm-hmm. people that make it. Usually, you go look at their yearbook pictures, and they're the goofy looking ones. Oh, they're, they're not the uh, they're not the popular, attractive kids. And most just, of the time, I, I couldn't get it right. Like I, I look <laughs> at these, you know, all all of my friends were so pretty like i mean like they were just i don't know just good looking girls for sure um and they're they still are uh i i i look back on those pictures and i'm just like what on earth like my hair is like naturally like super super curly yeah and kind of looks like i put my finger in a socket (laughs) if i don't do anything with it but like back when i was in school i didn't have like a like a flat iron or like, like a curling iron to like tame that shit, you yeah. know, like my hair was just, I was lucky if I had like one good hair day in, in a matter of like a school year. But, uh, but yeah, I look back on it. I'm just like, wow, I'm just thankful that I had, uh, humor, you know, to, yeah. to kind of like gain friends. Cause I think that was, you know, that's, that that was it for me. I didn't have really much else going on besides that, <laughs> for sure. I was just really weird. Um, My favorite hair on a girl is fix it or don't fix it or whoever, but then go stand out in the rain for a few right. minutes and then come back in and then just let it do whatever it does. You yeah. know what? And it really does look sexy. It does. 
Yeah. We don't we don't get very many opportunities, you know, because it doesn't rain. We all don't the get time. much rain around here. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but yeah, I could go for that too. I believe yeah. I believe that for sure. I've had some good rainy, rainy after hair hairs. Yeah. What, what am I saying? After, after so, rain hairs. But uh, you, you're totally skipping all of the bands that you wound up being on. Oh, yeah. Being in. Well, you know, like college really wasn't, a, I did not foresee, even though I, I did try, I, in my brain I was like, you know, I think I'm going to go. So you two graduated high school. I did graduate high school. Three high school graduates. I, it was, that was a big deal for me because I honestly thought I wasn't going to. Like really? physics, I was in, like I had physics first and second period every day. And like my physics teacher... Mrs. Jasper, I, I'm so sorry if she ever <laughs> listens to this. Like, I'm just sorry. Like, I just did not try at all. Or maybe I did, but like, I just wasn't, I just wasn't there, you know? And she's like, you're not going to graduate. Like, I can't, like, you, you're just not going to graduate high school if you don't try to to pass this class on some level, you know, and I'd be like, I just don't care. I, I, I hate this. I hate this so bad. But anyway, I did, I did graduate. That was a big day for me. I thought like, wow, I did it. Cause I, I didn't think I was, but anyway, I graduated high school. I kind of knew that uh, college was not, not a thing in, in my future for, for more reasons than one, but can mostly. I, can yeah. I show you something real quick? Yeah. This is my favorite. Uh, e card that I've ever seen. I think it says people. <clears throat> it says I saw this in, in like a, oh, in a Walmart perfect. or something one time. But it was like you know you always see congratulations graduation cards or whatever well, on the end of the aisle. They had this one sitting there. And it's, it's got a picture of a kid with a cap and gown on, and it says congratulations on getting through the easiest part of your life. Well, I For think sure. that's supposed to be a kindergarten graduation. No, that looks that like was, an awful no, young child. No, well, that is a young child, but it's, it's the same thing. Symbolism. It's the same thing. Yeah, symbolism. That's, that's what hilarious. It, that looks like a young child. That's what the inside mind of an eighteen-year-old right, person yeah. looks yes. like. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. But you know, like, I, and I, I totally agree with that. That's hilarious. And I, I can, I can see why that is funny, but honestly, high school for me was yeah. absolutely awful. Really? Uh, what's well, different for everybody. It was you awful. You can't blanket, you know? Um, yeah. And it was a lot of, I got made fun of a lot. It was like, Ooh, you sing. Oh, good for you. You know, it was just a lot of like hate and, um, you know, I guess bullying on some level. I mean, it was just yeah. tough. It was like, and it, speaking of, you know, when you go from being like super thin and no boobs and, uh, you Girl, know, tell me about it, <laughs> but, you know, like, <laughs> seriously, like just ex- and then one year you go to school and you, you have boobs and you don't have glasses anymore. And for some reason you decided to dye your hair blonde and like people are looking at you like you're from another planet and you just, you, they don't know what to do with you, you yeah. know? So I did out. <clears throat> Outside of school, like I said, thank God I had a really great like music teacher um, who really believed in me, saw a lot of promise and and said that I should pursue, you know, my dreams and get the hell out of Blairsville, Pennsylvania, you know. And um, so with that being said, like everybody, I remember it being like graduating. Everybody was graduating and having their graduation parties and um you know, everyone was like talking about going to college and where they were going to go. And I was like, what the fuck am I going to do? Like, I just remember right. thinking like, I'm not going to college and I got I got to get out of here somehow. But my friend Casey Austin, he was the quarterback of the football team. His parents were super cool and they had this band play at his graduation party called yeah. Broken Arrow. And it was a bunch of older guys just like playing these, the the best classic rock songs ever oh, like yeah. in the back uh, in the backyard and uh i knew every word to all of those songs because of my mother and my pa- my parents they listened to they listened to the good stuff you know right and um so i was like singing along and you know eventually at some point i think the parents got drunk enough to be like steph you got to get up on stage you know show them you got some pipes Woo, you know yeah and i was like you know and this guy ralph he was leading the band um you know he's like yeah kid you can come on up you know sing some songs and i don't remember what i sang probably bobby mcgee or something like that yeah but i had janis joplin <laughs> out and i just got soup i just kind of like it was like a new so at that point you had been 
you had done like stage stuff, like as yeah. far as theater. <laughs> yeah, I was yeah. in theater. So I, at that point, you had been drinking. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. I mean, as far as like, you know, when you were a little girl, you got yeah. embarrassed to be in front of people. Oh, Today, no, like, yeah. No, I found a home for sure. Like through high school, I was doing I was doing musicals and and I I loved it. Like putting that mic on and having that musical pit, you yeah. know, the orchestra, uh, well, my high school oh, was cool. like as yeah. small as we were, man. Like I said, my music teacher, Mr. Thorne, he was he wanted us to have the best of the best. That's great. Um, and so and we did. And and it was awesome. So I kind of got a really good feel for what it was like to be on stage. I got over the stage fright once, you yeah. know, as soon as you get that standing ovation uh, and and. And you get recognition for things that you're really into. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, that did it for me. I was like, I'm I'm hooked. You know, right. this is this can actually be a thing, I think. And I stuck with it. <clears throat> but, uh, yeah, I got up on stage. And so it was definitely a big leap from, like, doing musical theater than getting up on stage with a rock band. Um, you know, but I fell in love with it. And literally that night. You know, the guys were like, well, we got a whole bunch of shows, you know, so they, up. they get and, you to come sing. Like, and yeah, they were like, come to come to a practice like we have rehearsals every Wednesday. And I was like, well, I got to go home and ask my dad. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, Cause this could be kind of weird. You know, I'm 17 years old and uh, these guys, you guys are, are like, 40, in the, they're like, they were pushing 60. You wow. know, like they, yeah. these guys were doing it for a while, but uh, <laughs> they were super cool, though. This and um, young, hot. Yeah. New blonde. I, I mean, yeah. I, I mean, looking I, back, I mean, when I, I would say have asked that, to join that band too well, at I, that time, be like, hey, you guys, you guys uh, need a tambourine player tambourine or something? Yeah. I, I, you know, but in it, I got to say, like, it, I was really, really lucky because it could have been a really weird situation, but it, it was the exact opposite. I, yeah. They kind of like adopted me as like their, their little like girl they never had, you know, in, in the music, you know, and Ralph. He was the lead singer, um, and he just totally took me under his wing and, like, mentored me through the whole, like, this is how bands work. And, like... Oh, that's great. I, yeah. I mean, well, my... Actually, the funny thing, the he was, like... have to fumble our way, up, our way through He had it. said to me, like... So, my dad came to the first rehearsal. He wanted to, like, make sure it was, like, out on a farm right. somewhere. And... Because that, that could have been terrible yeah, yeah it could like, <laughs> have gone a lot of ways it could it could have gone a lot of ways but uh it was so awesome my dad actually knew ralph ac- my ralph the lead singer had gone to high school with my my mom's brother okay um and because it was funny because he was like so we might know each we might kind of like know each other somehow yeah, you said it was a small town it's a small so town yeah, yeah. and he's like is your mom what's your mom's maiden name? I said, Perfetti. And he goes, oh my gosh, I went to school with Joe Perfetti, who's a few years older than my mother. That's, that is such an Italian name. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. It rhymes Joe, with spaghetti. Yeah, Joe, Joe Perfetti. My mom's name is Sylvia. So wow. Sylvia Perfetti. But, uh, but yeah, so we kind of, so it was a, they just loved me. I mean, I was, I was such a sponge, you know, I was like, I was just excited to do anything in front of anybody, you know, and they're teaching me, you know, you should sing Linda Ronstadt and, um, you know, like, let's do, let's, let's try to get you into well, they tried to do more, you know, girl songs because they had never had a right. female a in the band. Book that they could open. Yeah, so I sure. definitely did a lot of uh, Linda Ronstadt, and uh, so that was really cool. And they just and you know Stevie Nicks, and you know they were like, go home and listen to Fleetwood Mac, and you know yeah. tell us what you think, you know. And I'm like, well, I already know Fleetwood Mac because my is mom that, listened to it her whole life. So is that what made you want to start going by Stevie? You know what? No, because. I, my last name is Steve's. Right. And um the nickname Stevie I wasn't sure even to this day if that was actually what your last name was. But Steve's it's really, it really yeah. is. too perfect. Yeah. 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 My name is Stephanie Steves, but like I, I had gotten a job somewhere in between uh all the band like the bands that I was in in, in Pennsylvania. I was working at a uh an animal shelter in Indiana County, Indiana, Pennsylvania. And um so people had called me Stevie, you know, growing up, but it never really stuck and I never yeah. really liked it, you know. Um hmm. 
And then I was working at this animal shelter and this friend, a friend of mine that worked there, his name was Terry. He, there was another Stephanie that worked at the shelter at the time. And, uh, we were both working in the cat unit. (laughs) So it got really confusing. Everybody was like, Stephanie, go do this or Stephanie, clean that shit up or, you know, whatever. And, um, it finally got to be super annoying. And Terry was like, your name is Stevie from now on. And I was like, okay, that's fine. And then shortly after that, I had moved to Nashville and I kind of just used that as a means of, of, of making people remember my name as a waitress. Um, because Hmm. you don't, you just don't forget a name like Stevie. Stephanie turns into Bethany or Tiffany or something that is definitely not your name. And so I, yeah, so I hung on to it. I mean, it, my family, nobody calls me Stevie in my family. And John actually calls me Steph. Um, yeah, whenever I met her out in Wyoming, uh, <laughs> I said, well, Stevie is a boy's name, so I'm not going to call you that. What's your, what's... <laughs> so uh, I've been calling her Steph uh, yeah. ever since Yeah, then, he didn't but... buy into the whole nickname thing. But, but, uh... it, but I imagine, I mean, you know, I grew up, I don't know about everybody else, but Sarah and Ashley and Stephanie – if that was I a met popular one, name. I met yeah. 10 million and I only went to school with like, you know, 70 other kids or something. Yeah. Right. So <laughs> I can of. it's I mean, yeah, I imagine that that would get confusing. But I love the nickname Stevie and and I I embrace it. Yeah. I love it. I mean, I, it's kind of my Nashville name. It kind of it, it made me like feel better about. I don't even think of you as things. Stevie. I think of you as Stevie Steves. Stevie Steves. Stevie Steves. Steves. Yeah, I sent, I sent, <laughs> I sent her a picture uh, yesterday in my phone. She saved as Stevie Steves. <laughs> a bunch of E's. A bunch of E's. Yeah. There's a lot of E's in my. I name. hear. I hear. Papa Pat Rains in my head saying that for some yeah, reason. Yeah, he does say yeah. that. He Steve says Steve. my name. Yep. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's totally how he says it. But yeah. So did you give the did you give the college thing a go or no? Just... No, I went straight from that college graduation party um, into singing every weekend, and I can still remember like I never even, I was still working several jobs. I, I I don't ever remember not working uh, as soon as I got out of high school. A lot of jobs. Um, to just get the hell out of my house and, yeah. and be on my own. I never really, I just, I never really wanted to stay in Blairsville. I knew that from the beginning. Did you move to Nashville from there? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, I had lived in Pittsburgh or I lived near Pittsburgh for a while and I'd lived in Indiana, but I kind of always, uh, Indiana, Pennsylvania, not the state, but, yeah. uh, but, um, but yeah, I, what was I saying? <laughs> when, when, when did you move here? I moved here in 2007. Okay. Yeah. So I was really Did you young. know anybody in Nashville or anything? Or did Not you say, really. Screw it, I I'm had met a guy. I met a guy before I moved to Nashville. I used to come down to Nashville all the time. Um, I had made quite a few trips here um, and just fell in love with it. Actually, my grandma, we got on a plane when I was like 19, maybe, uh, she was like, I want to take you to Nashville and I think you're really going to love it. Yeah. I want you to sing in front of all these people, <laughs> you know, you're going to be a star kid, you know? Right. Yeah. Uh, but, and I was like, okay. And I actually really did. I fell in love with it. I met this guy who ended up moving in. Like I came to Nashville. I ended up coming here a lot earlier than expected. I had it all planned out. I was going to come with my best friend, Jesse, who I was talking about earlier. Mm-hmm. And we were going to live together and just write music and sing and, you know, just kind of live the dream, live the dream. Right. Well, my sister had gotten pregnant and she was still living at the house and it just was this crazy. I just, I knew, I knew I needed to get out a little sooner cause she was still at home and, uh, it's a lot going on. There's, it's a house. lot yeah. going on in, in a little tiny <laughs> house. And, you know, I just, I was like, I can't, I can't be here anymore. So I packed up a little bit early and moved down to Nashville. And I had known a guy just from coming on my visits and stuff. Yeah. Um, he's like, well, you can live with me, you know? Ooh, someone's riding a Harley. I can hear that. Um, but yeah, he was like, you can live with me. I ended up like dating him and it was like the worst part. It was the worst, literally the worst year and a half of my life. He, he did not make it easy. Um, but yeah, I was young and stupid, but anyway, yeah, I moved to Nashville and 
It got you here. It got me yeah. here, and I learned a lot through that s- small little tiny relationship that I had. Uh, but never gave up, man. I moved closer to the city because at the time I had lived in Hendersonville and um, closer to the city and just made a lot of good friends and waitressed my butt off. And So how did you end up out where you met John? Where, where the two roads are coming to right. to to a point here. Well, to, in to that meet. in that awful, re- there's something beautiful out of everything oh, ugly, yeah. you know. And uh, in that ugly relationship that I had, I had uh, made friends with a really, really special, nice guy, Todd Morrison, um, and he believed in me. He said, "He's like, you know, you you're a great little writer. You're you're really good, and I think you should sign up for this." Um, or try or enter to, to go out to Wyoming for this seminar. And, uh, I said, well, uh, I'll give it a shot. You know, I didn't have really any money at all at the time, but he said, well, if you (laughs) enter, enter some of the songs and, and if you don't make it, I'll pay your electric bill. I said, deal. So I entered a couple of my songs. I did some really shitty recordings and thought, man, I'm not, uh, I'm definitely not going to make it off of these, <laughs> but I did get the phone call. Skip you and called me and said, you're coming to Wyoming. And I was like, man, that's awesome. Like that, that's amazing. Um, so yeah, it took somebody else kind of saying, you know, right. you're, you're good enough. You, I think you, you got something going. So yeah, uh, back in 2010, uh, went to Wyoming and met John. We were riding the back of horses and, we were in the mountains. So what was the, they were just out there on a trip? It was a week long thing. Or? So like Skip Ewing, no, now he's a very successful songwriter, but he got a couple other songwriters to go out who've, who've had uh, success. Yeah. And you basically wake up every, you're out on this ranch. It was called, what was it called? The Lazy called L&B? The la- yeah. Yeah. The Lazy L&B. And there's just horses everywhere and... You're in, you're staying in cabins with people you don't know. And, um, basically these, uh, established songwriters talk to you about their, their lives and what got them there. And, Hmm. um, you just kind of open up and, and kind of explore the possibilities of how you can get from point A to point B. So it was kind of, that was really cool. Yeah. I want to go now. It it, it was really cool because (laughs) The entire thing had like zero to do with writing. Mm. It was kind of interesting because the whole thing was like if you were there, you had already proven that you didn't suck at writing. Yeah. So, I, well, I mean, to a certain degree, at least. Right. Um, so it was almost everything after that was them telling you about their journey. Yeah. And like you drawing comparisons to that. So, yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. So it was really cool. So it just wound up opening conversation between everybody there. Yeah. I think. Yeah. Right? More than anything. Yeah. It was really, really cool. And uh, and not knowing, I mean, I lived behind the liquor store on 8th Avenue. And uh, when I met John, you know, we were, we literally had just met each other and we were all getting to know everybody. And I said, well, where are you from? And he's like, well, I live in Nashville, uh, I live behind the liquor store on 8th Avenue. Huh. And so I was like, man, we're neighbors. Like, we we literally wow. we've yeah. never met each other. But So there were people from all over at this. At yeah, this there was somebody okay. from Alaska. There was Canada, somebody from Canada. Arizona. Arizona. Yeah, California. yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, uh, but there were a couple people actually from Tennessee, which doesn't shock me because, or yeah. from Nashville, yeah. just because, you know, it's the... It's the music city capital well, of the world. One was yeah. uh, like Lance Carpenter, who uh, uh, another kind of songwriter thing, but like wrote like Kelsey Ballerini's first big hit. Okay, and uh, yeah, you know, Hannah Bethel. But he didn't have writer. the hit. I mean, obviously no, yeah, at the yeah, time. yeah, at that yeah, point, yeah, right. yeah, mm-hmm. he was, right. yeah. So um, yeah, in in the past, like uh, you might have heard uh, Jada Dreyer. Uh, she's written name. a ton yeah, of yeah. stuff. She got yeah. a great artist career going on. She w- went. To oh, did it. she go to that? Yeah, she was I another one, that. and uh, a few other or people That's cool. throughout time have been. So y'all there. Mm-hmm. just happened to be like, hey, yeah, we uh, we're neighbors. We're neighbors. Yes. Yeah, I couldn't wait for him to get home because, like, as he said before, he was out in, at Dean Dillon's place, and you know, and by the way, I had no idea who the hell that was 
either. Yeah, like I had, yeah. and I didn't care. I was like, mm, cool, man. Like, <laughs> and, and yeah. you know, and you know, he was also, John had said, uh, he said, don't Google me <laughs> because he had, Famous you know, last don't, words. Yeah, right. Yeah. yeah. That's Cause never I was a good thing to say. I just wasn't in, I just don't care who you are. I just yeah. don't. Yeah. I really, I, and it, nothing really impresses me besides your attitude and your personality. So I don't care how many, you know, hits you've written or whatever. Cause there's right. a lot of people that are super talented that, that are assholes, that are assholes <laughs> yeah. And, yeah. and don't have that kind of recognition. And I think a lot of it has to do with luck and, and all of that. So like, I just, I just did not care if he was in a rock band. I didn't care that Dean Dillon was, you know, a friend of his. I just, that doesn't impress yeah. me at all. Well, I mean, at the end of the day, <laughs> at the end of the day, we're all people with, yeah. Yeah. with bones and muscles and blood through and blow, you know, flowing through our veins. Which is why I think stuff. John and I got along so well, because we, we, that kind of stuff just doesn't do it for us. You know, I think like yeah. hard work and just being good people, uh, when I, I just, I really was on the edge of my seat. I could not wait for him to come home because yeah. I knew that while well, we were neighbors and, and I knew that we were going to write together and, mm-hmm. um, I couldn't wait cause we clicked pretty well. I mean, you know, when you go blindly into a situation out in the middle of nowhere with a bunch of strangers, you don't know what you're, what kind of experience you're going to have it's you know, almost like best. you w- might say that it's like a box of chocolates it is like a box <laughs> oh my god uh oh. but yeah so it it really Great. worked out Great. and like super fortunate like like uh i mean we've we have been kind of inseparable since 2010 we've been so you came back so when he did come back, did y'all immediately start like writing and playing together? Oh, yeah, I had him been over. been singing together since then? He brought a six pack of beer and I think we've been, <clears throat> yeah, we were, we were drinking beer and writing songs, uh, for a while. Get and it, it was, it was funny because like, you know, like in Nashville, John says this all the time, but like there's, you know, the songwriter round, mm-hmm. you know, that you always have to try to get your feet wet and and get in front of people and play your original songs and that's never a fun thing to do it's kind of like it's kind of boring it's unless weird. i have i have back and forth feelings about that yeah that whole thing. well the the whole thing whenever um to i guess to answer your question first of all we didn't really start singing together mm, first. no 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 um but like i said we had started or like she said we had started writing together mm-hmm. but at that point i was uh I don't know if you would call it picking up traction uh, just as far as songwriting was going. Uh, At least I was getting asked by a lot of people to come and do these rounds. Yeah. And, you know, just uh, shithole bars and and all that, which, you know, I was at anyway. So I was like, sure, I can't. Might as well bring my guitar. Exactly. Mm -hmm. But the whole thing with those, it was like, if you if you don't have hits a or b if you're not funny yeah it's like they're fucking miserable <laughs> yeah for you know sure. and you're you just gotta, like it's like I mean, it's like so many things in my opinion you have got to just make it fun yes yeah. you got to just like have fun with it because you know I guess I it wouldn't be a one of my podcasts if I didn't use some piece of advice that my dad gave me right but right my dad's yeah. told me my whole life like if I come in complaining about having to go do this or having mm-hmm. to go do that he'd always say son. If you have to go do it, if you're going to go do it, you might as well make the best out of it. Exactly. Right. And yeah. I feel like it's that kind of thing. Like if you if you're not already super famous or popular, then you might as well have some fun with it. Yeah. Right. You know? Yeah. Right. So yeah. so uh, so eventually, um, we had maybe started singing together a little bit, and I was I kept getting asked to do all these things. And when you're just starting writing, you're trying to get the thing going. The worst word in the vocabulary is no. Right. Oh, yeah. So, sure. yeah. so say yes to everything. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I was asked. I was like, "Hey, these are miserable. Do you want to come and be miserable together? <laughs> with, you know, uh, and maybe we can like sweet. sing some of these songs that we wrote together." Yeah. yeah. And and we started doing that. You know, just just basically to have fun, and uh, and people started asking, "Well, what's the name of your band? Do you guys have a, a CD or anything?" And for the longest time, we were just like, "Well, no, it's just." We're just doing this, and so uh, during this, are y'all? I mean, you're writing, obviously, but are you, either of you like performing also? Or are you like just working jobs and writing, or what, just? I was. Yeah. I mean, I know John was working out at his parents on his parents' property, which took up a lot of his time. I mean, 
that's a lot of la- that's a lot of acreage to cover. He was doing all the that manual labor uh, work, and I was waitressing um, well forty hours a week for sure. Um, so yeah, our only outlet I think was just kind of writing together and uh, you know and trying to. I mean, honestly, we didn't like. I never thought that I would be in a band with a guy like John, like his, his, his particular style of singing and and writing and all of that. Um, it, it definitely took time and we didn't just like immediately, uh, connect in that way. I think once our friendship got, uh, deeper and, and we started respecting each other more, we were more invested in the music that we were doing. So it, yeah. it took a lot of, I mean, we, and it still does take a lot of practice and, um, you know, hard work to, to make our sound the way it is. Um, but yes, we were, we were working side jobs. That was the, that was the majority yeah. of our so lives. So then people kept at, like you were saying, John, like people kept asking, what's the name of your band? What's yeah. Yeah. yeah they, and they would do that. And, uh, I guess eventually we were like, okay, well, we got to think of a name for this thing. And, and, um, yeah, we did. And just, <laughs> we, co- we, we ended with, we ended up with the devious angels. Yeah. That was right. our, that's what I, yeah, that's where yeah. I met you. That's as. how our we met you. you. Yeah. 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 We were the devious angels and, uh, we, you know, just, it, it was just a name. Like there was no th- really thought into yeah. it. I actually remember taking, we were like, well, let's combine our names. Like D his last name is Deesha's. Yeah. My last name is Steve's. So I was like, really the only like stevious word. is not a word. stevious <laughs> is not a word, but devious. Stevious is. sounds like something that I put in my coffee. Exactly. So, yes. Yeah. Yes. Stevia's yes. packets. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's uh, yeah. We went with devious and we just put angels on the back of it because you can't go wrong with, yeah. with that. Well, I and guess. you also have to understand <laughs> around that time that was the uh, the year or years of like Tim and Ann. You know, like, oh, yeah, you, you know, yeah, like yeah. Jack and Diane, you know, yeah. the, like girl and guy name. And it was like, well, fuck that. We're not doing that. We're not you doing know, that. Plus, like, you, your name is J-O-N. So yeah. everybody would be spelling it wrong. J-O-H-N. And then Stevie. And Stevie is e. usually spelled with one E, but I have two. Right. Yeah. So Stevie. it was like, yeah, right. Steve. Um, but yeah, we were like, that's going to be a headache. That's yeah. not. And John yeah. and Stevie, like, that just sounds lame. So. Yeah. That, that ain't a band I'm listening to. <laughs> you know what I mean? No. Uh, the Devious Angels, though, yeah, that got us. I mean, it was the most. So you rolled with that for a while. Yeah. I mean, yeah. 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 And and it was fine. It was good. We had a lot of fun as the Devious Angels. I love that. Can we, go ahead. Can, can we pause for. Or, or, yeah, go ahead. We'll just talk. That's all good. Uh, it's uh, go in and. <laughs> Yeah, I knew eventually he would have to take a piss. He usually has to go every 10 minutes. Yeah, I drink Uh, a lot of water, but I'm doing all right right now. So Good. Yeah. Well, now that it's just the two of us, (laughs) let's talk a lot of shit. No, I'm kidding. (laughs) Old Forrest Gump John over here, you weren't weren't lying about that. No, it's crazy. Like he, I mean, and he's not lying about any of it, you know, and he's just, it's just the most honest. That's what I told him, like when I, after I kind of learned his, his past and and really found out the the kind of person he is you know yeah. like he's just the most honest freaking person on the face of the earth i have yet to meet anybody that is more honest or or determined or yeah. just kind of like and he's just, it's kind of like a uh i'm doing the opposite of talking shit right now but uh <laughs> But he really is the most unassuming, just like thinks the best of everybody. Right. Like, it's just insane. I've never it's met a, anybody like that before. I, you know, I try, I, you know, I try to be that way too. And it's, if you have to pick between assuming the best in people yeah. and assuming the worst in people, <laughs> I would rather assume the best. That's, oh, what sure. I, that's what I do. Sure. You might get disappointed more. Yeah, yeah. But. Yeah. I still would rather be that guy. Be that be on that side. Yeah, yeah. be on that side. Yeah. <clears throat> so when did y'all start? You know, you named you picked a name. When did you start like booking or playing? We gigs, honestly like, playing shows? we would just play for whoever would have us. I yeah. mean, like the I mean, birthday parties, 
yeah. uh, you know, the so yeah, crappiest you had side of bars. jobs, so you weren't mm-hmm. super worried about we've got to make this much money playing music. You know, you right. Well, you know, I. I had a really like she I She talked a lot of shit about you while you were Oh, I, I just assumed that. Yeah. <laughs> she, she like talked about your your shoes and your glasses and everything. It was terrible. It was your all hair. bad. Hair. I mean, right. anyway. Um, but honestly, I had had a I had a conversation with John while I was working. I worked at uh, a place a diner called Athens. Athens Family Restaurant. It's on 8th Avenue. Um, in Nashville. I had worked there for over 6 years. Um, but in the first couple years working there, like it's a, it's a, it's a dive, you know, it's, it's just yeah. a diner. You know, I was lucky if I walked away with like 70 bucks in my pocket during the shift, it was just like, you know, most of the time I was just pouring a lot of coffee and putting up with a lot of assholes. Yeah. Um, <laughs> which is the waitressing that was great, world. It was a great experience for the music business too. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> talking, with, talking with assholes, pouring well, a lot of your own coffee. Right. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's funny cause I, I mean, this is off topic kind of, but I, I, uh, well, I waited on a lot of people in the business, yeah. um, who treated me like absolute crap. And mm. now I see them in our business, uh, from day to day. And, uh, you know, you just don't forget that. And then sure. there, there's a lot yeah. of people that treated me really well. Um, but I think how you treat um, somebody that works in an apron mm-hmm. um, says a lot about you. So, Absolutely. yeah, and I don't I don't forget any of that. <laughs> it's just funny to, like, meet some of these people and, anyway. But uh, but yeah, I remember talking to John. I was like, man, I, I need to make more money. Like I'm, I'm barely getting by like working this shitty job. And I think he's the one that said, I'm barely getting by like going on six years now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. like no, it's I know, tough. I know you the know? feeling for sure. Yeah. Um, and I was like, maybe I should just work at a nicer restaurant, you know, or like at a bar. Like I know I, I could be a kick-ass bartender, you know, yeah. they, they bring home thousands a week, you know? And, uh, John was like, you know, he said, I would stick with this shitty job and it, it will make you want to get out of there a lot quicker. That's really good advice. And honestly it it's, and I mean, he said it and I, I just, in my heart, like I couldn't agree more, you know, yeah. but it was like, man, it I'm, sucks. <laughs> I've got to eat, you know, yeah. like it's, it was, it, it was tough. Cause the busier we got outside of our day jobs, yeah. I mean, I was really not making any money right. like at all because you know, you, you don't, you take out one of those seventy dollars shifts, and yeah, that's, yeah, that's like everything. That's seventy dollars. Yeah. That's yeah. everything, and um, you know when you take off work to go play the shitty gig that's not even p- that pays you in beer, you know, right. like a like a tab at the mm-hmm. bar, you know, yeah. like you start thinking, man, like maybe I should just get a couple shifts at a better restaurant, you know. But you know, the one thing that having John around, I was like, you don't want to get comfortable doing something you hate. Yeah. Um, and so I stuck it out, man. I was like, I'm going to keep doing this cause I hate it. I mean, putting on that apron every day, um, for just little, that little bit of money just was a constant reminder of, of what I didn't want to do. And it made me work really, really hard. Like it made the, the moments outside of that restaurant so much more valuable. Yeah. Um, so, I was yeah. talking with uh, Chance, my cousin that works with Isbel. Um, love him, by the way. Yeah. I love you, Chance. I hope you're listening to this because I freaking adore you. He's awesome. He's he's a good one. But he <laughs> he said when when he first moved to town, I think he moved to Nashville like 2010, I think mm-hmm. or so. And I was playing in a bar downtown at that point, and we were in there hanging out, and he was talking to an artist. Uh, a buddy of ours named Tim Waters. I don't know if you know Tim, but he's a character. Anyway, so he was, Chance was like, yeah, I just moved here. You know, I, I write songs. I want to you know, be involved in the music business. And and Tim, I love him to death, but he still like plays cover game. I mean, he's, he's married. He's got kids and mm-hmm. whatever. His wife has a real job. And so he just kind of <laughs> plays and has fun. And that's cool. It's great. But Chance was like, do you have you know, what, any advice? Because Tim's been here for a while. And he was like, any advice for me? And Tim said, yeah, don't get a real job. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, it sounded kind of ridiculous at the time. But looking back, it's kind of like you said, John, like if you get, if you're chasing, if you have a passion that you're chasing after, 
if you along the way, if you get something that like pays well or mm-hmm. takes up too much of your time or attention, mm-hmm. it's a big deterrent yeah. from oh yeah from your goal. And so that's kind of what, in very few words, that was what he was saying. He exactly. was saying, you know, don't don't get something that's going to hold you back just for the money. Well, and the truth that. is, the last thing you want are options. You know, um, and that yeah. was the whole. That's why I had to drop out of school. It's like as much as I loved going, and I I do love school just in general. Yeah, it's like that gives you a safety net. That gives you a plan B. It's like I just. Me personally, because that's the only person I know 100%, right. I know that if I have a plan B, I'm probably going to pick that. Mm-hmm. Um, so my deterrent was don't give yourself a plan B. Yeah, Just do what you came to do and exactly. do that. And I think that, like many things, depends upon the person. Absolutely. But, I mean, I, there, I know a lot of people but, that you know did graduate and then are super successful, and I'm like, that's... That's amazing. Yeah, but, but it's important to know yourself, yourself. and yeah, yeah, and to know if that's you, which which lane. It's the you're only in, person yeah. that I I would ever feel confident speaking for would be myself. But <laughs> right. you know, I I can throw advice out there. It's like, well, yeah, yeah. well, I mean, that's the yeah, yeah, that's all you can do yeah. is is if you're giving <laughs> advice and trying to help somebody, mm-hmm. you say, from my perspective, it's blah blah blah. Right, it's this. Right, but it's up to the yeah. other person. Yeah, I'm I'm yeah. super fortunate that uh, I've had him around over the years because um, it does it definitely gets tough. Um, it, it's gotten pretty tough. <laughs> yeah. So what's happened in the past uh, the past couple of years? What's been going on since you were Davy Sanders and you started playing? Like what's going on now? So like, tell us we, about we, your, your town now. When did we're that town. happen? Yeah. So so we were um, and I tell you things were times were getting thin. Yeah. At this point, and we had had a gig scheduled at Soulshine. Yeah. Um, Soulshine <laughs> Pizza, and uh, I wasn't gonna go. No, she was super pissed off. I and didn't want to go. I was tired. I'd been working my butt yeah. off all week. I said I'm not going. And I said, and yeah, I'm just, she. I'm just not going. She was just like, yeah, throwing a, in the towel. Well, I said, thing. I said, I honestly remember saying, I don't want to go. Like we kind of had at this point, and this was just less than a couple of years ago at this point we had written a slew of songs like in every different kind of genre we had like yeah. like super duper country songs we had super more pop songs we had you know rock songs and i said man i'm tired of like this like the like i'm tired of doing certain songs yeah and i don't want to go i'm not going to play and i'm not going to go sing some like a song that doesn't represent me anymore yeah something that i can't relate to i said so if we're gonna go play soul shine tonight i want to play i want to make the set list and i want to play my songs i want to play what i want to play yeah yeah and so and you know we were like oh we're not gonna make any money and anyways it was uh (laughs) it was uh it was rough goings and so i was like well let's just do this show you know it's like we we don't ever have to do another one if you don't want to but let's just do this and so no kidding we go and we just we kill it, and we wound up getting. I think we got like a hundred dollars. Yeah, after awesome. tips and, and like expecting to make zero dollars. Yeah, like, cool. We can like maybe like eat, eat. a couple slices of yeah. these pizzas. Yeah. Revives a little bit of that. Yeah, hope, you know. Yeah. And and no kidding. Uh, this manager Rusty <laughs> Harmon was there that night. He saw us and he was just kind of floored. He's like, "Will you guys come back to my office right now and do that again?" And we said, oh, sure. Sure. You know, and yeah. uh, so we went back to <laughs> We're rich yes. now. We, we just made a hundred <laughs> right, bucks. Right, right. Yes. And so so we did. And then he he was like, wow. He said, can you guys come back in the morning and do that again? And uh, <laughs> he wanted to make sure that like the alcohol wasn't like. Yeah. Right. Like, messing with his head or something, you know. And well, that's, yeah. That's yeah. And yeah. so. Yeah. Um, so we and did. make sure that and make sure that you could do that yeah, regularly consistent. and it wasn't a fluke or something. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And yeah, so we did and uh he went back that next morning and did played him some more songs and uh he called later that day he's like, "Can I manage you guys?" And uh it was a big turning point and uh since then, you know, we've signed uh publishing deals. Um so we got to quit our day jobs. She doesn't have to uh, take it. Yeah. Cue the applause. <laughs> yeah. 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 Button there. And uh, <laughs> got that in uh, so an artist development deal. And um, we got a van. 
uh, yeah. named her Betty White. Nice. And uh, yeah, White. we like just we yeah. just been uh, we just been traveling. So when did you when did the name change happen? Um, when, you know, when that started, was we that? had kind of always wanted to change the name. I think over over the course of the Devious Angels, we were playing some really killer shows with a with a great band that we still adore, and we actually still get to play with some of those musicians every once in a while. Um, but those guys, actually, with our keyboard player who actually still plays keys with us, his name's Matt Heasley, and uh, cue the applause, cue the applause, yeah, <laughs> for Matt. Uh, he said. During one of our rehearsals years ago, he was like, you know, I've been trying to figure out, like, what to call you guys. Like, what kind of music to say you guys sound like, you know? Yeah. Because he's like, I get asked and I don't know what to say, but I say, like, like it's town music. Uh, you guys are town folk, you know? Like, huh. you're not, like, big city pop people. Like, you're not all living pretty somewhere, you know, yeah. or trying to act like something you're not. Right. Um, but you're not, like, these backwood kids that just want to stay in their hometowns either you know like yeah or you know like in oh, the, i dig that that's yeah, cool yeah. somewhere right in the middle so it's not too hollywood and it ain't too Hillbilly. Monticello. yeah <laughs> you know what I'm yeah, yeah so yeah we're town folk and so yeah. yeah that's what we so when we came time to change our name we were like well you know what i think that kind of suits us a lot better and represents us better. And I think it it makes the most sense. And the more time that's passed, the more time I've had to look back and I think about it and just, um, you know, and some of them are my really good friends that do real well in country music and kind of do like the super backwoods thing. And I'm like, man, what a crock of shit. It's like, the truth is you got out of your shithole town because you had big dreams. Right. So now all you're doing, you're turning around, make it, it's like, it's you're not still that person. Yeah, like you had. Yeah, sing, a, you, sing about what what you what right, you are. Right, yeah. and so, mm-hmm. you know, and, and I kind of just uh, I kid around with it. it, you know, and it's all joking because right. I'm just I'm just happy that somebody else is happy. Yeah, I, I don't care what you do, frankly. <laughs> and but you know, when I when I listen back to our music, it makes so much sense. Yeah, you know, it's all these um, kind of very simple words, but it sounds like these big rock bands that we all grew Love. up idolizing yeah. it's like yeah. somehow mixed all that and we're like i don't know if it's original or not but at least it's honest yeah that, that's all I'm, it's you yeah that's, that's all great. i to say that's, that's all i ask for yeah when i'm like from from an artist or a person or anything it's yeah. like i don't have to agree with you but just be honest right you know, like yeah. exactly so yeah that's, that's awesome so what's going on what's you got coming up what's going on now present day we're present we're day the future. yeah present day has been really awesome we came out with an ep last year called games we play games we play and on itunes and all that stuff it's on itunes yeah. spotify, spotify yeah is. check it out um and so we did that which has kind of like gotten us to this point you know like kind of getting the pub deal going and and getting more people behind us and yeah. enjoying what we do so we um, went back into the studio a few months ago and kind of like tried to pick some songs that we thought were pretty cool and recorded a few. Are you going to do another EP next? Or are you going to do like yeah. add those songs and make a full I album? I think we're going to do one? another EP because I yeah. just, I just like EPs. I, I do mean, too. like, I, I agree. Just, yeah. I, I mean, personally, like, I mean, I love the fa- I love the thought of recording a full length and maybe like someday that'll be cool in my yeah. eyes again. But like I just I like EPs. I like having just like that sh- like a, a little short. Well, I feel story. like especially when you're on the front part of the career, which mm-hmm. we all still yeah. are. Yes. Uh, um, <laughs> yeah. I've, I've, I like the idea better of six or seven songs here and then a year later, six or seven songs a year later. Instead of like you know once you get to a Jason Isbell status or something, then you can sure. do like. 12 songs every couple of years, every two or three years. But yeah. I think while you're trying to get traction and, and everything, I think well, it's the best mm-hmm. to, to it, keep it fresh. The way I see it is uh, when artists that uh, they are just brand new come out with full links, it's like you're trying to force uh, a main course on somebody yeah. that nobody cares about eating. And EPs are almost good, little appetizers. Point, it's like, hey, are you interested in this? Yeah. If we can maybe gain enough interest, mm-hmm. we'll give you more songs. We could open a restaurant. But, someday. but until yeah. and but yeah, but until that interest is there, it's like there's no point in uh, trying to sell you going, fourteen songs. Or exa- yeah. <laughs> exactly. And uh, yeah. you know, and and obviously, again, uh, I know a lot of people that 
that do that. And as long as they're happy, I'm happy for them. I'm with you. Yeah. But, I'm with you on that. But yeah. all I can speak for is us personally. Yeah, yeah. It's, I mean, that's just how we are. Yeah. Like all of our, you know, we always talk, everyone always uses the word organic and everything. Like our numbers, refl- I mean, people, you can, it's out there. You can pay for fans. You know, you can oh, pay yeah. for like what it looks like. Yeah, you can get 30,000 Facebook likes and 20,000 Twitter followers. Yeah, you can do all that but with money. But every yeah. single one of the people that are on our social media, we interact with them. And every single one of them we've gained along the way. Yeah. Um, and I just hope that it continues to be that way. You know, um, that we don't, I mean, that's the honesty. It goes back to that. It's just like, yeah. I'm not going to pretend like I'm popular, you know, that that's a dangerous game to play too. Absolutely. Um, just yeah, for your own what, mental what, state. Yeah. Like, it's just like, you know, I don't even see it as like being popular. I just see it as like, you know, just gonna, you know, you go to one town and you connect with like, you make friends, you know, like you make, you, invite people into your world that you want yeah. to, you and know, you want them to stay there. And right. yeah, I'm going to say, I feel, yeah, yeah. I yeah. completely agree. That's like, what we've been doing. That's what man, people, that, this whole yeah, time. When I hear people say something about fans, I'm like, I don't even, it fans. makes me feel weird when I hear people say that I have fans. Like I'm just, there's friends. I have friends mm-hmm. and it, I made friends in Macon, Georgia a couple of nights ago, you know? Exactly. Like, mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Oh. So, so, what, so yeah, we're uh, just about to, I think, put out another EP. Speaking of that, yeah, and a particular we're, song. We're trying to narrow it down yeah, to and, a particular uh, song that we're, we're gonna. We had this let fly. super awesome opportunity to play the uh, Pilgrimage Festival. Oh yeah, yeah, great. Yeah. When is, yeah. is that? That's coming September. up. In September. September. Yeah. Okay, yeah. The end of September. I think Very the twenty fourth cool. or twenty third and twenty fourth, maybe. So uh, awesome festival so, in Nashville, people. Are, yeah, yeah, Justin Franklin. Tim- Franklin, Franklin, Franklin yeah. 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 yeah, Justin yeah. Timberlake's gonna open for us because <laughs> I think great. he's the last person to play on Saturday and we're the first people to play on Sunday. So he's like, technically like open opening for us. So that's there pretty huge. Pretty huge. I'm freaking stoked. The first my first concert was in sync. And I am not ashamed to admit that. I still have the T shirt and cue the applause. Yeah. Forrest Gump over here actually probably helped uh, form in sync somehow. Yeah, actually somehow I, 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 I was hanging out with Justin Timberlake Shut when up, he John. made the sexy back record. Him and Templin, no shit. Oh my god, that's after. I can't tell if you're lying or not. No, I I swear, he's not. I got some wild stories. So annoying. We start hanging out with you, John. I know. Like he, everywhere we go, I'm also as boring as Forrest Gump. (laughs) Like he's letting all of his cards. Like he's letting all things have happened around me, but I'm just kind of like, I'm the guy. I'm the photo bomber. You know, (laughs) through life, I'm not. I'm never the. Okay, when I record my next CD, then I'm just going to ask you to just come in and hang out in the corner, and then maybe it'll make good things will happen. He's a good guy to have around. I I can definitely, I can agree with that. I can take a good picture for you. (laughs) So are y'all? Are you going? Are you touring like out of town or anything? Or yeah, we're actually out of. the pun is totally intended. Okay. It, that's why we named, yeah, yeah. town. You, we have so many different ways of using our band name. That's right. uh, you know, get out of town and go see town <laughs> <laughs> or go to town and listen to town. Anyway, yep. that's a, that's awful. Come into town. Say that. town. Yeah. Town in your town. Town, right. town to town. We're coming to, <laughs> town is coming to your, to a town near you. What towns are you playing? Are, are you got anything coming up? Uh, you, you, we're uh, we're going to be up in Washington, D.C. Right um, before the 4th, which yeah, is going to be for, cool. Uh, yeah, for three or actually two or three or four dates in a row. So yeah, that, we're that's playing pretty the cool. Vinyl Lounge, right? Yeah, and uh, a couple of other places. I, I can't remember now, but... um. What's the website they can go check this out at? Is it town town townmusic dot com and don't forget the e. Uh, yeah. the e is for decoration. T o w n e music yeah dot com yeah um yeah so all of that good stuff will be on there. Plus, if you follow us on social media, we we tend to it's been it's hard to do that like promote yourself and like be. I don't know. It's, it's it's a I'm weird still world. trying to find the balance of it, like because well, you don't want to be that guy's like. Buy my music. Come right. see my show. Right. Buy my music. Come see, you know, you want like. <laughs> but I'll, this entire podcast is so good. I mean, awesome. it's, it, you know, it, it takes things like this to feel okay with talking about yourself. I, we, we were actually just talking to Travis about it this morning. Yeah. And it's, you know, uh, anybody, at least that I know that I hang out with often, uh, have a lot of great stories to tell, but they're not necessarily the first people to jump out and, you know, 
talk about themselves. Right. Yeah. So uh, any excuse is a good one because <laughs> I think it's important. Um, well, yeah, I got to thinking when I was tossing around the idea of doing this, I got to think about all the great conversations I have, like in band vans traveling yeah. down the road yeah. or just sitting around having a couple of drinks with three or four people. And you have these great conversations and I start, you know, I'm thinking, <laughs> man, this might really help somebody out. Or I wish I could have heard this conversation 10 years ago. Right. Or, you know, like <laughs> right. you hear right. people saying, man, I wish I'd have done this differently or whatever. And think, well, maybe if somebody else hears that, mm-hmm. or, you know, whatever, just, yeah, there's, there's so much. This can is be gained awesome. From Jacob. We love you. This is well, so cool. That I you love do you this. both. Thanks for coming in. Um, <laughs> do y'all want to, you want to sing a song or something? Yeah. I think I, I've, I've got a guitar in the car. Seriously. And yeah. I, I thought ahead. See, I'm left-handed. So, oh yeah, yeah. I about that. Well, we'll uh, yeah, we'll get the guitar and mics and stuff set up. But before we do that, um, if you had if you had one piece of advice for yourself at you know eighteen ish, nineteen years old before you, and you know, before you came to Nashville or whatever, like what would you say? We'll start with we'll start with Stevie, and then we'll end with Forrest Gump over here. I would I would say don't listen to a damn thing anybody says about how you feel about something. Cause I had a lot of people tell me along the way that I couldn't sing and I'd never be a songwriter and you know, you can't live on your own and do all, I mean, just stupid yeah. shit, you know, especially cause I'm a girl yeah. and we kind of have a little bit more of a mountain to climb in a lot of different areas still. And that's okay. Cause we can take it, you know, I'm, I'm okay with that. Yeah. But I had a lot of people tell me that, you know, that little dreams were, were meant for sleeping, you know, and Hmm. not living. And I just never, I mean, it it kept me awake some nights, you know, but honestly I didn't give a shit. And I wish I, now that I'm older, I definitely don't give a shit, but you know, when you're younger and more, it gets a little tougher, you know, when you're, when you're young and impressive, what's the word? Absolutely. Imp- impressionable impressionable thank yeah. you john but yeah you you start to let like negative shit soak into your your heart and all that and i would just say don't listen to that crap yeah keep cool. going <laughs> uh, uh, advice? i candy i candy john i oh, candy okay. john um, <clears throat> i don't i don't know what advice i would give anybody other i mean that would be not, any- not anybody else like yourself, like yourself. Oh, oh, yeah. like, oh looking back talking uh, to yourself at uh you know 17 18 19 uh, I mean, you're always right. Oh, my uh, God. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, I, I honestly have no idea. I think it would uh, probably echo uh, what Stevie had to say, you know, uh, where it's just... Uh, well, it was like you said earlier, that you only know yourself. You're right. the only person that right. you know 100%. And right. I think that kind of falls yeah. in yeah, line Yeah, just kind of do what saying. you know is right. Um, always do the right thing. And uh, I've grown to know that the right thing is different for a lot of different people but uh i've always felt the right thing for myself and it's landed me in a lot of cool positions very cool uh, so so i yeah i think i would just say that awesome well uh (laughs) we're gonna get set up to play some music for you but thanks for talking and we'll be right back ladies and gentlemen thanks for having us (laughs) there we go
everybody not bad huh definitely go check out their current ep games we play and be on the lookout for a new one coming soon if you are around the nashville and franklin tennessee area september 23rd and 24th you will be able to go see town perform at the pilgrimage festival in franklin tennessee uh, but if not go check out townmusic.com for other shows updates and all that good stuff their instagram and twitter are both at town music and remember that is all town with an e on the end t-o-w-n-e music and all of this info of course and more will be on the show notes page over at don't stifle me.com slash zero one six thanks for listening friends uh so very much appreciate it if you're digging the podcast here please make sure you click subscribe so you'll get all the new episodes automatically downloaded to whatever device it is that you're listening to right now uh, as always if you have any questions or feedback or input of any kind, uh, shoot that in the email to jacob at don'tstifleme.com. Or you can just send a message or something to any of the social medias. Uh, the podcast social medias are all at DSM Podcast, and mine are at Jacob Stiefel. And once again, if you're interested, my music is and merchandise and tour dates are all on jacobstiefel.com. Okay, I'm going to get out of here now. Uh, you should go be nice to somebody today and have a great week. I'll talk to you later. I don't know where, I, yeah, I, eventually I was like, oh, this just took a right left turn. <laughs> <laughs>